Hi. Hi. Hello, humans. Let's get into it. Wait a minute. Hmm. Who is teaching you about the Bible? The reason why I ask this question is because I've been listening and hearing a lot of crazy Christians who I had to say it. I've been listening to crazy Christians for a while now, and I've been trying to figure out who is teaching you about the Bible. I've kept my mouth shut because what I don't want is to offend anyone. I've been trying not to offend anyone because I'm a Christian and a true believer too, but I've been hearing people who believe in the Bible are saying some crazy stuff. And then something happened recently to me and I got this light bulb. I'm gonna tell you what happened. My son had a test in school. He's in high school. He had a test in English based off of a book, a book that was about, you know, less than this. This is the Bible. This is a hard read. His book was smaller. He passed the test, but didn't read the book. I asked him, how did you do that, sir? That sounds genius. He says, Simple. I went to school, took the notes down from what my teacher said would be on the test, studied the, the notes, passed the test, which means I am now proficient in English. I'm like, oh, dear God, read the D book. Are you Christians doing that? Same thing, being smarter Christians? You're not reading this book and what you're doing is going into church and hoping your pastor or whoever you're calling, that's looking funny, your teacher, you're going in and not reading this book, taking the notes from your teacher and then passing life as a Christian because you got it right. What if your teacher has biases? What if your teacher doesn't know a D thing about this book, but you're hoping and praying that they do? The reason why I say that is because this is a very hard read. I get it. That's why a lot of people don't read this book. My father insisted I read it front to back and did just that. And do you know, I read the King James Version, which is like Shakespeare. Thou this, thou it, when it, what, what do you want me to do, God? I'm so confused. I remember crying to my mother, what do I supposed to do? This is so difficult. As I got older, I then realized I have to go back to history and find out what it is I'm reading. So just from my own personal knowledge, I then started studying history on why this book is the way it is, why it's written the way it is, and that it's a bunch of books put together in a story, right? My mother wanted to take it further. She goes, nah, not only is this book historically different than our reality now, but it's translated from different languages. I want to know the original transcript. So the best she could do was find a rabbi and understand the Torah. The only way she can understand the Torah, she had to learn Hebrew just so she can understand this book. So I get it. That's a lot of work to do, right? So it is easier to go to church and just pray that the pastor in front of you truly understands this book and is actually caring about you for you to be a complete spiritual human being. I trust the author. I do. Christians, I need you to stop being Christians on cliff notes. You need to read this book because what I'm finding out and I'm hearing from a lot of crazy Christians is hate. How on earth are you finding hate through love? So if I am a pastor with a bias, a bias means I'm going to look for what I want to find. Let's say I'm a pastor who hates yellow people. I am going to tell you a sermon a day about how I'm going to find that in this book. I'm going to look for any interpretation I can. Oh, bingo, found it. I'm going to teach you on Sunday. In the word, it says to hate yellow people. And there you go, trusting me. Like, oh, shoot, pastor said hate yellow people. It's in the Bible. I'm going to go ahead and reference that. You know what? He right. Hate yellow people. Christians, I'm going to tell you something right now. God is nothing but love. And God is you. If you truly believe that God made you and I in his own image, then you can't possibly hate anyone and love God. If you hate me or yellow people, you're hating on God. 
Don't worry. I have a really great exercise for you. One, read the deep Bible, please. Read it yourself. Read the history on it. Learn Hebrew if you can, because this is translated from another language. And as we humans know, I hope you know this, things get lost in translation. Don't be a lazy Christian is all I'm saying. Don't be a lazy Christian and then find courage and hate. You're being lazy with the, with the word, but then find courage to hate. Hmm. Do you know there's a practice that I do as soon as I start being fleshy? Let me by fleshy, I mean not of the spirit. The spirit is nothing but love. It's light. It's nothing but love. Oh my God. And it's an amazing feeling when you just tap into your own spirit. And that of God, because God is with you. When you start becoming fleshy, right? Hate, lies, sneaking things you're not supposed to do, that's fleshy, right? So anytime I start being fleshy and I want to start having a bias, let's say I'm going to hate yellow people and I'm going to find something to hate about them, right? Do you know my own psyche? Because I love God so much. As soon as I start having a bias, or a stereotype about another human being, do you know I imagine my God looking just like them? <laughs> and it immediately takes hate out. I'll give you an example. If you hate Chinese people because someone told you you should hate Chinese people, right? Imagine your God Chinese. Whatever imagine, imagination you have or image of your God, imagine your God Chinese. I guarantee you, you'll stop hating Chinese people. <laughs> it is a wonderful trick I did during meditation when I was praying about a person I disliked. And I am very uncomfortable disliking people. It makes me very uncomfortable to dislike another human being. And I was starting to get real biased on their culture. Like, maybe because he's that way. That's why he said that. Do you know immediately? I said, okay. Imagine your image of God looking like that person you hate. That's your God. So you hate black people? Imagine your God black. <laughs> you will stop hating black people. And that is, if you truly, truly know who God is, which is a powerful light that a lot of crazy Christians are barking hate. God is love. God is you. What are you doing, crazy Christians? You making us all look nutty. That's why sometimes it's hard for me to say I'm a Christian. Actually, please. No, it ain't. I'm a Christian. What are y'all? I'm a Christian. What are y'all? Y'all making me look nuts. So, all jokiness aside, I want everybody to feel good like I do. And if you're feeling good, wonderful. Welcome to feeling great. But if you're walking around spewing hate behind a book of love, a book of love and spewing hate, I don't recognize you. I don't recognize the God that you're serving. Do you? Humans, remember you are loved. You are blessed. And you are never alone. God bless all humans.